All right, so in this video, we are going to install Ubuntu on this NUC. So what is the model of this NUC? You will see here on the screen. Hello, IT pros. This is Jay Singh. Welcome to my channel. And uh, follow me on Twitter at this is Jay Singh. And if you're new to this channel, hit the subscribe button, click on the bell icon as well to get all the latest updates from this channel. Any links mentioned in this video, you will find it in the description below. All right, so on this NUC, we are going to install Ubuntu server. For that, we need a bootable USB stick with Ubuntu server on it. So at the time of this recording, 20.04.1 Ubuntu server is available, which is LTS. And uh, for that, we need for a bootable stick to create that stick, we need Rufus. So I'm going to show you how you can download Rufus and how you can create bootable media with that. So I'm going to plug in this to my laptop and I will show you how you can download Ubuntu server and Rufus. Let's get onto it. Okay, so this is the USB stick that I just plugged in. You can see that it is Ubuntu server. So you can um, go to this link. You will find this link in the description below at the time of this recording 20 04.1 LTS is available so I'm going to download that so which I have already downloaded so click on download and it will go ahead and will start downloading the ISO file okay so Rufus is here so this link you will find in the description as well so click on um, here Rufus 3.11 at the time of this recording this is the available version and probably this will be an XE file here you go so run that so this is my USB stick, which I've just plugged in and I will select the ISO file, which is here and open source Ubuntu server. So this is the one here. So everything else I'm going to leave default and I will click on start and you will see that this, this image uses uh, this, 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 I will say yes to it and um, write in ISO image mode, which is recommended. Click OK on that and click OK on that again. So partition scheme here, you can see MBR and target system BIOS or UEFI and file system FAT32. So I'll wait for this one. Okay, now USB stick is ready. So I'm gonna close that and uh, let's pull this one out. All right, so this USB stick is ready. Now I'm going to plug in this USB stick to this NUC and then we are going to boot this NUC to this USB stick. But before that, I would like to show you some different options that uh, there are that you should select before you boot it to USB stick and uh, something equivalent will be available if you're using a different system. Let's have a look at these options. Okay, now let's turn on this NUC and I have plugged in that USB stick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter the UEFI BIOS setup. So let's turn this on and I'm just turning it on. So I have to press F2 key on the keyboard to get to that setup. So it's gonna enter the setup and two or three things that we are going to make sure that are set before we boot to a USB stick. Okay, so the boot order in this case, it is UEFI. I would like to point that out and you can see that UEFI is selected, it's ticked. And uh, if we go to legacy, it's not checked. So let's go back here. So we would like to go to advanced settings. So UEFI boot, you can see that this is the order and I'm not really fussed about this order at this stage. And uh, it is picking up the USB stick and uh, the first, but later on it is important. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'll leave the USB there for now. And uh, let's go to boot configuration. So here it says Linux, and uh, this is what it should be. I've seen on Asus motherboard where it is quite picky. So if you don't pick Linux, it doesn't actually install and um, the other option is Windows. So I will just keep Linux. Here USB is boot ticked here. If this is not checked, I wouldn't be able to boot to this USB stick. And uh, secure boot is enabled in this case. And Ubuntu works fine when secure boot is enabled. I have tested this out. Okay, these are my settings and make sure in your case, if you're using a different hardware would be different settings. If you're using NUC and then probably you would like to go with the same settings as well. So I'm going to save these settings. Um, I think these are already saved. However, I will just press F10 to save these settings anyway. I will say yes to that and it's going to restart. Now I will press F9. I'm pretty sure it is F9 to go to the boot menu. Okay, it is F10 actually to go to boot menu. So I have selected F10 and uh, now I will select Toshiba memory stick. 
So you can see that this is UEFI as well, which says UEFI to Shiba. So that's what I'm going to select. Uh, I will hit enter on the keyboard and I have these options now, install Ubuntu server. So this is what we are going to select. Okay, this is gonna take some time and I will be back when this is ready. Okay, here this is the language. So I'm gonna select English and then I will hit enter on the keyboard. And uh, now the next is the keyboard layout. So I will use up arrow to go up here on the layout and I will hit enter and I'm going to change it to English Australian and I will go down there and I will hit done and it's going to apply the config. Okay, so I have just plugged in an ethernet cable. So I will use up arrow to go to ethernet and I will hit enter here and I will select edit IPv4, hit enter and uh, hit enter again. We are going to select manual. So select that. In the subnet, it will be 10.0.0.0 forward slash 24. So this is a subnet, address will be 10.0.0.8. So, and uh, gateway is 10.0.0.10. .10. So this is my PF sense router and DNS server, internal DNS, I'm using um, Windows DNS server for this lab and uh, name server, the next one is my uh, PF sense 10.0.0. 10. Okay, so the search domains, this is important as well. So if you're using Active Directory or any other domain, so internal domain, so in my case, internal domain is technex.local, otherwise it wouldn't resolve to any internal DNS names. So this is why I have to provide that name here, which is technex.local. So once you do that, uh, I will click save on it, and then it's applying changes. You can see that continue without network. Um, okay, so it has picked up the network now. You can see it say it shows done. Hit enter on done and then no proxy here. I will click on done here, done here as well. And uh, local disk, hit uh, enter on it and select the disk. And uh, so here you have to select the right disk. So in my case, the disk where I would like the server to be installed is 120 GB. So that's the disk I'm going to select and then I'm going to use down arrow to bring it back to done and um, everything is done. So I'm going to select done here again and uh, continue. So here I'm going to pick a name. So netmon and server name is technex-netmon01 and I will go again, pick a username. Netmon is the username and I will pick a password for this one. So enter the password twice and then Hit done at the bottom. Install OpenSSH server. This is what we are going to need and this is how we're going to connect from our computer. So with the space bar, you can uh, check that uh, box and we will click on uh, done. Hit enter on your keyboard and nothing else I'm going to install. Use down arrow, hit enter on done. And that's all. So I will be back when this is ready. Okay, so it is installed at the bottom. It shows that cancel update and reboot. I'm going to let it update. And once the update is finished and then we will reboot that. And uh, we might have to unplug the bootable media. So let's uh, just wait for it. So it, it took about two, three minutes. Now it's ready to reboot. So I'm gonna select reboot and hit enter. And it will prompt us to remove the media. Um, so I will do, I will remove the media. So it says, please remove the installation medium and then enter. I will remove that and um, let's hit enter now. Okay, so now it's restarting. All right, so now it's prompting us to log in. So I will use the username which I have selected earlier and uh, provide the password and hit enter. So I have successfully logged in here. I'm going to clear here. And uh, the main thing that we want to do is I want to make sure that I can ping the internal system. So if I do ping 10.0.0.2, one sec, it's uh, a lot is happening there. So we can see that it's pinging. Let's uh, control Z, clear that out. And let's ping it again, ping 10.0.0.2. And you can see that it is pinging and we can ping 10.0.0.10. 
So this is a pfSense and it's pinging that as well. And we can try pinging 8.8.8.8. .8 we can see I can ping that as well. So I'm not gonna work directly from here. So we are going to download SSH client. So we will connect to this Ubuntu server through SSH client. So I'm going to jump on my computer again and we're going to download SSH client and then we will connect to it. All right, so we have just installed Ubuntu server on this little NUC here. And uh, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to download SSH client on the laptop and then we are going to connect to that server through that SSH client. Let's do that. Okay, so I'm going to download PuTTY and you can use another SSH client if you like. So I will just uh, go to putty.org. You will find that link in the description and then click here to download. And uh, let's see if it downloads XE file. Okay, so this takes further to another page. So you can download MSI 32-bit. Let's click on that. And uh, if XE, XE is just, uh, it doesn't install actually. So MSI, if you download MSI, so that will actually install. So you can go ahead and install that. I have already installed it on my system. So it's here, putty. So I will click on that. Okay, so here we will enter the IP address of Ubuntu server. So in my case, it's 10.0.0.8. So enter yours in your case. And other thing, I would like to make sure that from this computer, I can ping that IP as well. So otherwise I won't be able to connect. So it's 10.0.0.8, hit enter. You can see that I'm getting reply back from Ubuntu server. We can close that. So we will click on open and I will say yes to it and uh, log in as. So we know that the username is uh, netmon. This is what we selected and give it the password which we have provided. And here you can see that I can successfully log in from SSH client from my computer. So manageability wise, it's a lot easier to manage it through SSH client. So this is from where we are going to manage it. Okay, so in this video, we have installed Ubuntu server. So we looked at how we can download server, ISO file, how we can use Rufus to burn a USB stick, a bootable USB stick that we plugged in USB stick to our NUC and then installed Ubuntu server on that. So that is all for this video. If you find this video informative, Give it a thumbs up, show your support, subscribe to my channel, click on the bell icon to get all the latest updates and news from this channel. In the next video, we are going to install Zabbix on our Ubuntu server. So I will catch you in the next video. Have a good one in the meantime. Take care.